Hi, people often ask, how do you transfer a um, template that you see in a plan that's in a magazine or small scale? How do you transfer that drawing without a full-size template to a piece of wood? So I'm going to show you that, and hopefully you'll be able to follow along here. Um, what almost every plan comes with is a cut list or cutting diagram. And what we want to uh, show is the stretcher, which is 5 inches by 41 inches. So we have a board that's approximately that. I think we have 5 and 3 eighths. Yeah, by about 41. So we're just going to call it roughly and then base our measurements off top and bottom even though they're not going to be precise. So the first thing we want to look at is the points that we have to measure. So from our square end over here we're going to go ahead and look at the distance, this 1 and 3 sixteenths, from the corner that we need to mark in. We're going to go ahead and take that. We'll go in 1 and 3 sixteenths. And mark a point. Then the next, we know we need to go up 4 and 3 eighths and mark that other point that that will allow us to draw a straight line over to. So let's go up four and three eighths here. And then we simply connect the dots. And take those two points. And that's going to be our cut section. So next we know we're going to go from this point up to the next and re remember we have a 5 and 3 eighths piece of wood, this is a 5 inch piece of wood, but we're just going to cheat and assume that it is. So this we know we need to go in 2 and 5 sixteenths. We'll go ahead and just go in and mark that with 2 and 5 sixteenths and then the same thing. Draw the straight line between those two. Again, this has that added 3 eighths, but you get the picture. Next, we know from that mark, so to get our me next measurement, because they didn't mark from this point to this point, we could do a little math and figure it out, or we could just go from the end point of the 41 inch board and go over 17 and 3 quarters plus 5 and a quarter, so 23 inches, and that would give us our next point. So if you remember, our board is a little long. I did mark the 41 inch point. So let's go over from there. Again, 23 inches. And this is um, one of those things that people sweat a little bit too much. If you really think of it, a, a unique shape to an Adirondack chair is not a bad thing. As long as your parts, your two sides are, are the same as each other. There's no problem having a little variation. In fact, I'd encourage that every time I finish a project and I'm rigid like that, I realize I really didn't need to be, and I could have put some creativity into it. So, so now we have a curve here, and if you look, um, they're down three quarters of an inch from that five inch line. And we're cheating on that a little. A lot of people wonder how they draw a nice smooth curve without a giant uh, compass. So one thing that you can always do is find the center point. And we know that this is, let's see, about 15 and 3 quarters. We're going to go down 7 and 3 eighths, excuse me, 7 and, a half, 7 and 7 eighths. And we'll go down 3 quarters, as they did here. They went down 3 quarters. Down 3 quarters. I'm just going to estimate this to be close enough and go over seven, seven and seven eighths. And what we'll do is put a little nail here. Take something flexible. It could be anything. It could be a ruler. Um, 
ideally we would put another nail at each point that we flex. So we're going to bend that. Something a little more flexible than this would be good. But again, this is not something that's set in stone in terms of how it needs to look. So ideally I'd have a second person just to help me for a second. Um, since I don't, I want to do the curve and I have something that's uh, flexible but that doesn't hold its position. I need to put two anchor points and then the other I can do with my hand. So again, it's just a rough curve. Just screw to screw here, not ideal. I could blow out the edge um, up against the centered nail, which is the important part. And then I'll flex it up to that next point. And then once you have your flex, you should have an equal curve, depending on what you're using. Um, in between those two that I can just draw out. And there we go. We end up with a curve between those two points. And once you have one template done, you can just use this and make a mirror image for your opposite side. Let's go ahead and pull out our anchors. on with our other points. I think you get the picture though. So from this point we know we have five and a quarter. Try and get a ruler that's a little more visible on camera. So we'll go five and a quarter down. And then from that point we have to do our end points first. We're going to come in five inches from the corner. And then this one is asking us to do the angle. It isn't giving us the no, it is giving us the one at five sixteenths measurement. And again, draw our straight line. As you can see in the back side of this plan, it doesn't really have a termination point for that little uh, return. But if you can picture it, this is the piece right here that sits on the ground. That's purely a visual, they have it at 90, and then this section in the back doesn't matter. You could literally draw that as a wavy line if you chose to. There's no structural value. That's purely an aesthetic thing. And if you chose to make that something unique, you could. So all that we want to do is make sure there's enough meat, enough substance to that section it doesn't come to a pinpoint at the end so that it soaks up and rots quickly. So all that we're going to do is just draw it to a point that we think looks good. We'll give it a try at two inches. You can look at that and say, okay, I kind of like the look of that. You can see the two inch point. And that gives us our straight line between this mark here and this mark back here. Let's go ahead then, take that point and that point, and again, no structural value here, it doesn't match up with any other part of the chair, and so this can be purely something that you think looks good. So there you have that part of it. The next part is just simply measuring and marking the holes. And this is all things that you do before you do your cutout so that you can have a square corner to measure from. So you know you go over 2 and 11 sixteenths. And then you can measure the top down. Again, we have 3 eighths inch extra width, so it doesn't marry up exactly, but it's not critical. Um, so if we go 2 and 11 sixteenths over, and then 1 and 3 eighths over, and then you can see one inch down and three and three quarters down. So let's do our two and eleven sixteenths from the corner. Yep, they marked it from the corner. That's what these arrows mean here. So this two and eleven sixteenths measurement up to that hole are from the corner, the dotted lines or the cutouts or the cutaways. So two and eleven sixteenths. Is down, excuse me, three and three quarters down from the top. And so, 
Square it against the edge. Come down three and three quarters. And we know that's our point for our hole. So you can give yourself a little center mark there. Then the next, we know it's one inch down and one and three eighths over. So we'll do the one and three eighths over from the edge first. So we're going to estimate the inch. Let's go one and three eighths. As you can see, this is kind of a unique ruler. And then one inch down. So we're right on it there. So that becomes our other hole. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to put a comment below. We'll answer any questions that you post there. If you would like to, we'd love it if you subscribe to the channel and like this video.